Hello. <laughs> I'm sorry, Eric just looks so stony in that freeze frame. Uh, hello, my name's Lola, and I'm going to be reacting to Miss Marvel's Episode 4 Breakdown, Easter eggs and details you might have missed. And boy, did I need this because I was so confused. I was like, who the hell are the Red Daggers? Who was that guy who led them and whatever? And, well, let's just see what Eric has to say. If you want to like, comment, subscribe to my channel, you can if you don't want to. That's fine, too. I just did some fun. Here we go. Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Boston. This is a breakdown of Ms. Marvel episode four, which takes Kamala to Pakistan for even more boys to fight over her. You get yours, Kamala. From hidden realms to Ant-Man murals in Urdu, let's break down this episode frame by frame for all the details you missed, because there is so much to explain here. The best way to support New Rockstars is by checking out our Ms. Marvel inspired Cosmic Daydream shirt at NewRockstarsMerch.com, where you'll get the added option to write in a custom shout out for our after shows. Also a reminder, we'll be in Austin this weekend at RTX. Hit us up on Twitter for details. On to the episode. Unlike previous episodes, this opening previously on segment switches to Urdu, as much of the visible text this episode does, including the closing credits as this series transitions from Jersey City to Karachi, Pakistan. Over the Marvel fanfare, the music is Summer Nights by Raginder, featuring Wise Child, foreshadowing Sana's later description of the night she was separated from Aisha at the train station. It was the middle of partition. It was a hot summer night. A tragic summer night Kamala revisits in the episode's final scene. Mm -hmm. The opening shot shows outside of the plane window, a cloud looming over the city of Karachi with the wing light shining through. And for a second, it evokes the existential threat facing this dimensional plane, revealed later this episode, the veil of Noor collapsing in the alternate realm of light flooding this one. It has been some time since Kamala ruined Amir's wedding and she hasn't heard from her friend Nakia. She scrolls through her texts quickly, but they read, I'm so sorry, please answer me, I'll explain everything. Hopefully you're all okay and no one is hurt. I wish things could go back to normal and like they were before. Please say something, anything. I don't know why I thought I could be a hero. It's so much harder than I thought. I don't know what else to say or how to fix this. I'm really sorry. Please just let me know you're okay. Though I don't know why Kamala expected new text to come in. She's been on an international flight and the plane isn't really low enough to get a cell signal unless she's using the in-flight Wi-Fi. But even then, since it's an international flight, wouldn't she have to switch her SIM card? I don't know. She might just be doing that thing where she's reviewing a bunch of texts that she sent right before the flight departed. And now as the flight is landing, she's waiting for a new signal. Panic waiting for what that response will be because I always do this I'm always wondering am I fired am I fired am I fired does everyone hate me does everyone hate me did a trailer drop mid flight these are anxiety poison I like how as they descend people to start to stand up to get stuff out of the overhead please sit down Sit down. I mean, this is the case on any flight, but especially international flights, just a very common and weird thing for passengers to do. Mm. Kamala arrives at the Karachi airport, blinded mm. by the light of the excitement around her. We see a returning champion cricket team celebrating, and then she is showered with red flower petals, recalling her fantasy of Kamran in episode two, and she's greeted by her cousins and her nani, Sana. They pass mm. by a mural of Muhammad Ali Jinnah, the founder of Pakistan, and they pass under this mm. sign, Karachi, the city of lights. Mm. Another hint of the hidden realm threat this plane, the Noor dimension, nor of course meaning light. This is literally the city of lights about to become a city of even more light. Now they used a number of establishing shots from the city of Karachi, but all the exterior shots with the actors were shot on lots in Thailand. Then mixed into the hmm. opening Ms. Marvel titles are a number of them written in Urdu. And I like how one of these Ms. Marvel logos is scorched into a delicious piece of naan. They arrive at Sana's hmm. home where they meet the wonderful dog of Magnum oh who needs to immediately become best friends with Lucky. Kamala find Sana's <laughs> study slash painting room where on the walls are newspaper clippings related to the partition. One mentions Lord Mountbatten addressing the Pakistan Constituent Assembly. Lord Mountbatten was a Royal Navy commander and member of the British Royal Family who oversaw the partition and was assassinated by the IRA in 1979. A fascinating <laughs> episode of The Crown where he's played by Charles Dance, Tywin Lannister. You know, the show The Crown where we all have to like pretend we care about the whims of the Royal Family. Oh, my horse doesn't like me. Meanwhile, what are we doing to imperialize the world? Never mind that. My cousin is flirting with me. It's just one of the many reasons I like this show for telling stories about, you know, everyone else in the world. One of Sana's art pieces shows figures in shadow walking across a purple hued cosmic backdrop looking a lot like the Noor realm that Kamala briefly dropped into when she first clipped on that bangle in episode one. And we see a bird's eye view of in this episode. After all, Sana does see those same trained visions. These are likely visions in her dreams too. Kamala and Sana chat about their background. Am I... A jinn? Of course. At least that is what my father told me. How are you so casual about this? I know, right? I don't see what the whole fuss is about. It's just genetics. No. 
Ha, a bit of a pun there, genetics. Sana explains mm. that the term gen is really just a name given to them and tells her again that story about how a trail of stars saved her on the night of the partition by reuniting her with her father at that chaotic train station. Until a trail of stars appeared and took me right back into his arms. On the train. And I am assuming that this trail of stars will be revealed to either be Aisha maybe using her Nor projections to save her, or perhaps the carrier of the other bangle, like a Kree warrior, maybe a forebearer to Captain Marvel, or maybe one of the Kree created Inhumans, like mm. Black Bolt or Maximus. I'm still holding on to hope that Inhumans might come up in this show. Kamala says that she can't figure out this puzzle and keeps breaking it even more, yet Sana advises, If you have lived like I have, lost what I have, you learn to find beauty in the pieces. Interesting wisdom for this era that we're now entering in the MCU, that a broken, fractured multiverse is more beautiful than one that makes sense. Kamala flashes back to the battle at the wedding hall in episode three, including this one shot of Adam striking her, F this guy, but notice how light flashes on him. So we are seeing him from Kamala's point of view as her Nor light activated to shield her. She has this vision as the portrait of Aisha rests beside her on the pillow, showing how she's really sharing this dream with her great grandmother. Oh, hmm. sorry. I didn't realize you were in here with someone. Yeah, her cousin is joking about her sloth baby napping pillow, but Kamala was with someone here, Aisha. Kamala and the rest have to eat on the patio because of the boat club's no jeans policy, or is it a no genie policy? I'm sorry, I will leave, I am so sorry. Get out, leave right now. As they tour the city, Kamala wears her New Jersey Avenger Con shirt that she got at the convention back in episode one. Her cousin says, Oh, and is this not exotic enough for the ABCD's Instagram? You know, American born, confused, they know what it means. Yeah. Yes, this is a term used by South Asian people to refer to second and third generation Americans of their same ethnicity. Might also remind you of the slang ABC or American born Chinese, which showed up in Crazy Rich Asians in one of the texts. And might also be the reference in the ABC Chinese restaurant in this episode. But I feel like none of this is for me to discuss. I am sorry. I love you all. I'm just trying to learn and I'll shut up now. At the Polaroid stand, there is a QR code. One of these, of course, appears in every episode. Oh, and this what? week, when you scan it, it takes you to Ms. Marvel number 12 from 2015. You can read this comic for free here. This is when Kamala travels to Karachi and runs into the Red Dagger. And I love huh. the joke here. This is a Polaroid stand. The meta joke is for us to literally take a picture with our phones of this stand. Kamala visits hmm. a train station and checks out a historic section that's under renovation. And there's a mural of Ant-Man resizing from small to large. And he's speaking a word bubble in Urdu, which translates to as powerful as an ant. And then there's a text box. You can start small and still be larger than life. Karachi Avengers series part four, telling us that this is part of a series. I love it. The artist is Sarah Hussein after Adrian Alfona. Adrian Alfona was the artist of the G. Willow Wilson Ms. Marvel series, and his name also appeared as a school founder back in episode one. And we gotta oh, point out yeah. this is the latest of many Ant-Man references on this series, which might just be because Ant-Man is a low-stakes comedic Avenger that Kamala in the show references more than the others to balance out all the nods to Captain Marvel and Iron Man. Also, he is one of the more public-facing Avengers since it was his podcast that she listened to to learn about what happened in Endgame. Also, Hawkeye did have a weird amount of Ant-Man nods that didn't really amount to anything, but it is just a reminder that people on the street level of the MCU are all about Ant-Man and Pimtech. And I really hope that we do see a version of Kamala's powers where she can truly resize the way Ant-Man can. She's then attacked by the Red Badger, Kareem, also from this run of the comics, a vigilante from Karachi who actually ends up moving to Jersey City. He asks her, Do all masked Americans have superpowers? Well, how do you know I'm not Canadian? Yeah, I met a joke here. Iman Vellani is Canadian. Might be why she's so dang likable. Kamala uses her <laughs> embiggened Noor fist to punch Kareem, and he releases a series of Noor darts that, if you look closely, actually go into Ant-Man's legs on that mural. Kamala catches a dagger in her hand the way Bucky can catch knives, but uh, she's definitely not as good at throwing it. <laughs> yeah. They end up referencing <laughs> Ninja Turtles and Danky Kang, and they fight to a draw. Come with me if you want to live. What? Terminator. Just yeah. kidding, I've always wanted to say that. Mm -hmm. Yes, the famous line from the Terminator, but I like how Kamala doesn't get the reference. Why? Because Terminator's a movie for dads! Just kidding, it's a movie for everyone. Everyone should watch it. Really, just T2 Judgment Day. No joke, top yeah. five movie for me. I love that movie. And I'm not even a dad, but I want to be one. <laughs> As they enter the hideout, Kamala asks... Red Daggers. What are you in a Pakistani boy band? Another boy band reference in the MCU. Mm. Avengers broke up. We're toast. Like a, like a band? Like, like, like the, the Beatles? Beatles? The Avengers! Yeah! That's great! What about hey, a band? What is that? Wait, you don't have the Avengers? Is that a band? Are you in a band? Fantastic board. Didn't you guys chart in the 60s? She meets Waleed, yeah. played by the amazing actor Farhan Akhtar, who actually starred in the movie The Sky is Pink, whose song played in the credits of last episode. Really? He explains here... The clandestines are not like the djinn you've 
heard about stories on religious texts. Really cool. I mean, if Thor landed in the Himalayan mountains, he too would have been called a jinn. Yes, Walid is alluding to the concept that mm. Thor and other Asgardians only have their Norse identities because of where on Earth they arrived. In reality, Thor is an extraterrestrial and the clandestines are interdimensional. It's just the human societies who call them jinn. Jinn really come from pre-Islamic folklore, far predating the hundred years that the clandestines have been here. Now, big announcement, the God Butcher World Tour is here and Epic Hero Shop has the merch That's for it. Awesome and what's more shirt. epic than the necker sword skewering Thor's head done up in an 80s heavy metal style? Nothing, none yeah. more epic on the back it's got tour stops that include realms Gore visited in the comics and places he might hit in the movie. Get it on a t-shirt or a poster or both so you can match your wall. And if you're worried about your head feeling left out, get Thor's Strongest Avengers hat while supplies last. Grab these designs and mark your calendars because on July 7th, we are dropping a new latest obsession. And of course, don't forget about the Ms. Marvel collection. They got shoes and stickers, notebooks, and bomber jackets. Shop these designs and more at EpicHeroShop.com. While lead continues, the clandestines and Aisha are from another realm. This map shows you how our two worlds coexist. Whoa, a lot to unpack here. So notice how Waleed twists a knob to show the superimposition of another realm map hovering over our world map. If you were to twist that knob a bit more, who knows, we might see a different realm map. Now, these lines do not adhere to any geography, topography, or tectonic features of our planet, or align to really any places of interest in the MCU like Wakanda or New Asgard. And that is accounting for if you were to align from Waleed's vantage point. But he uses the term realm, which is different from how universe has been used in the MCU. So to be clear here, universe refers to parallel realities within a multiverse, each of which are doppelgangers of our world with variants of ourselves living in it. The 616 universe, the 838 universe, the variants we saw in What If, the alternate Manhattans that Strange in America crashed through, because notice even the honeycomb world, the tube world, the bone world, were still alternate urban Manhattans just made of different things. So set that aside while we explain what realms are. Realms refer to surrealist ethereal buffer zones between universes, where unknown beings live. So you got the Nord dimension, Talo from Shang-Chi, and the realms beyond where the Dweller in Darkness originated, the Dark Dimension, the Quantum Realm, the Ancestral Plane, the Duat Underworld, Valhalla, the Gap Junction, the Mirror Dimension, the Astral Plane, the Shadow Realm from Thor Love and Thunder, Thanos' Soul Realm. All of these seem to be accessed either via death or through physical waypoints that are hidden in our reality. And a lot of the realms I just mentioned definitely have spiritual connotations, and they seem to be constant to all of the universes that I mentioned in the multiverse. Like there might be only one quantum realm that is shared by all these universes, I think. Like I'm mostly getting that from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. in which they use the quantum realm to bridge different timelines, but this also seemed to be the case in Multiverse of Madness, where Clea took Strange to the Dark Dimension to fix an incursion between universes, suggesting that the Dark Dimension's a kind of neutral zone where they could look at two distinct universes independent of any one of them. Then we see another device showing the Nord dimension. There are many dimensions around us that we cannot see. This is just one of them. What is this? Aisha's home. It's connected to our world but hidden behind the veil of Nur that separates our world from us. Yes, more to unpack. The Veil of Nor is this realm's waypoint, like the waterfall that separated Earth from Talo and Shang-Chi, and the Dragon Scale Gate that separated Talo from the realms beyond, where the Soul Sucker comes from. So this Nor realm is implied to exist on a dimensional plane on top of our realm, similar to how the Mirror Dimension and the Astral Plane and the Shadow Realm exist all around us, just unseen. This might be why beings like the Jackals and Moon Knight and Gargantos were initially invisible. The Nor realm's <laughs> surrealist columns tower high high above the high rises of Karachi, and it glows the same color of Kamala's Noor light. This is definitely the realm that she briefly fell into back in episode one. Also look closely, on the far end of the Noor realm is a tree, which seems very important. When T'Challa entered the ancestral plane, he saw his panther spirit ancestors in a tree. To me, this indicates that the Nor dimension also has a spiritual essence to it. Also, I like how this realm assembles in this device via gray sands or grains, reminding us of the granular vibranium that the Wakandans used to depict their origins. But then, Waleed and Kareem warn, Nur is the energy source of that realm. The veil, the clandestines. Even your powers are made of it. If the clandestines use the bangle to tear down the veil, they'll unleash their world onto us until there's nothing left of it. Yeah, this sounds a lot like the incursions we heard about in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness when one universe collides with another universe. An incursion occurs when the boundary between two universes erodes and they collide, hmm. destroying one or both entirely. 
So I don't know, I may be wrong about there being a difference between universe and realm and the way Marvel Studios defines these terms, and maybe this realm incursion is meant to be the same thing as a universe incursion, but I don't know, for now, I think universes and realms are different enough to assume that they are different categories of dimensional terrains, and both are just affected by the same crisis. So if we imagine each universe to be its own house in a row of cookie-cutter model homes in a suburban street, realms would be the yards, the driveways, the sidewalks, the streets, the ponds, the aqu- the gas lines, the avocado trees, the dog houses between all these houses. And so for two houses to collide with each other, there must be some kind of flood or earthquake that also causes the yards, the gas lines, the avocado trees to smash into those houses first. Those trees and turf and water all amounting to what a realm is, a buffer zone in between the houses. And we may have already seen some realm incursions existing in the MCU that could explain what these supernatural things are. Things like the invisible jackals, things like vampires, all these supernatural entities actually coming from realms, not other universes. And this earthquake in this extended metaphor could be a series of smaller tremors caused by several different disruptors like Sylvie and Loki and Peter Parker, Doctor Strange, Wanda Maximoff, all of them leading to one big earthquake causing it all to collide, realms and universes. I don't know, I could be dead wrong about all that. That's just where my head is at right now. And in this moment, Waleed eyes the bangle. I haven't seen that before. In all the years and everything I've heard about that bangle, there was no mention of an inscription. It says what you seek is seeking you. So since Waleed can read this and the myths never mentioned an inscription, I think this was added later by Aisha, a message that the Trail of Stars being sought by Sana and now by Kamala is some kind of chain of extraterrestrials, Kree or Inhumans seeking them. I assuming the ones seeking them are the same entities being summoned by the beacon in the Ten Rings and this inscription is a warning. Then we visit the DODC Supermax prison, which is the same facility we see in the She-Hulk trailer, meaning the abomination Emil Blonsky is also being kept in this place. Further confirmation that the authorities facing Kamala in this series is the same agency Jen Walters will deal with. We speculated this could be the Hmm. Cube, the supervillain containment prison in the Nevada desert, originally a shield black site designed for gamma radiated inmates, later becoming the home base of the Thunderbolts. Notice how this structure's angular architecture does look like a deconstructed or exploded cube. The clandestines break free, Kamaran getting hit with the blast of one of the DODC sonic cannons, the same ones made from the Stark Tech shrunken down versions of his Hulk repulsor that he installed on War Machine, and Najma's weapon looks like a Madubu used in a Tamil martial art. It's made of deer horns. But in this case, it looks like it's made of something different because we see it melting a lock. So apparently her weapon at least can superheat. Back in Pakistan, Sana tells Kamala the confusion between her Pakistani and Indian roots. There is a border marked with blood and pain. Yeah, it's my favorite detail this episode when it comes to the thematic connection between Sana's border and the border of the Vale of Noor. Sana explains how all political borders are a bit arbitrary and leave us divided. This episode explains how the political map we thought we knew of this planet is actually pretty irrelevant when you superimpose the maps of other realms over this one. Kamala joins Kareem's friends around a bonfire as this guy sings an Urdu cover of Didi by Cheb Khaled. Meanwhile, Sana and Ibu reconnect over going through Milk Toffee's boxes. Remember, Sana sent Kamala the bangle in one of these boxes in episode one, and after Sana and Maniba are finally honest with each other this episode, the trauma begins to heal as the next generation of women bond over eating these milk toffees. I just love the visual storytelling of this prop here. Waleed gives Kamala some fabric to wear, showing how she is piecing together her own costume, but the clandestines attack, leading to a chase in the streets of Karachi. Now they referenced Terminator earlier, I just can't help but see a parallel in the good guys on the small rickshaw versus the clandestines pursuing on the larger truck, and the Terminator John Connor and T2 on the motorcycle fleeing the T-1000 on the semi. Kamala spots a family of four way insanely trying to pile on a motorcycle. The baby should not be on that. Kamala forms a Nor ramp that rolls the truck and Kamala ends up back behind the wheel, a callback to her driving test in episode one. And just like then, she floors it in reverse initially. Waleed kills Salim and then Najma stabs Waleed and Kareem kills Adam and Najma stabs the Bengal, sending Kamala through this rift. Now these tears in the fabric of reality look a lot like the slices that Clea made in the Multiverse of Madness post credit scene. She tore an open back to the dark dimension, which makes me think that Kamala is not going back in time here. She's really going into the Noor dimension, the light dimension versus the dark dimension. And this is really a memory that she's going into. Of course, she finds herself back on that hot summer night at the train station that Sana referred to when the families were forced to separate during the partition. It is heartbreaking to end this episode here, but I'm not sure if Kamala is truly being transported back in time. Like you could totally read this as, Kamala is going to be the one to create the trail of stars. She's gonna save her own grandmother. It's gonna be self-fulfilling time loop. Harry Potter saving himself. 
another version of Hold the Door from Game of Thrones. I mean, I don't know, that might be the case. I'm just leaning towards this being a memory contained within the bangle. Because as Kamala walks around, no one really looks at her or reacts to her. There's just one guy who kind of steps around her when she turns to climb the train car. And Kree Tech is known for being intertwined with memory, from Project Tahiti and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. warping certain aspects of Coulson's memory, to Carol Danvers having implanted memories causing her to see Skrulls as the enemy. So I think Kamala is on a similar journey of self-discovery that Carol was on, similarly witnessing this memory, but from the point of view of her grandmother or her great-grandmother. She may be walking in one of their shoes in this moment. Kamala does see a woman with her daughter, but this woman is credited as a different actress than the actress who plays Aisha. Also remember, Aisha was separated from Sana in this moment. Sana would have been with her dad and then separated from her dad as well. And then the trail of stars brought her back to her dad. I assume next episode, we will see exactly what that trail of stars was, whatever cosmic source is seeking the bangle. Again, could be the Kree or their Terran experiments, the Inhumans, folks like Black Bolt or Maximus. For now, at least folks, the Inhumans are still on the table. And the final shot does show Kamala being enveloped in steam from the steam engine as haze surrounds the masses. A visual nod to Terrigen mist. We may have missed the mist. And again, something I love about the closing credits, the locales have been all swapped from Jersey City to Karachi on the green traffic light from Brad Winterbaum. Instead of Kamala's Bolt logo on the light, it is the Pakistani flag. Another thing they swapped out, the art of Kamala sitting on the swing now hangs from the crescent in the star of the Pakistani flag. What was the title of this episode? Seeing Red. And like Doctor Strange, Kamala was forced to go on red. In this case, go on that smoke show, Kareem. That's everything I spot in this episode. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EA Voss. Follow New Rock Stars. Subscribe to New Rock Stars for more analysis of everything you love. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye. <laughs> Yeah, in my reaction, I definitely pointed out that uh, when they were being chased, like, man, it was like Terminator 2. <laughs> and if you want to see my full reaction, there will be a link in the description below where you can see my full reaction to this episode. And, yeah, we probably might see uh, what led her mother to safety, you know, in the next episode. It probably could be her. Who knows? Uh and if I, you know, like, like I said, you want to see my full reaction, be in the description down below. This was a great breakdown by uh, New Rockstars. The Miss Marvel Episode 4 Breakdown Easter Eggs and Details You Might Missed. I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye.